Hi, Lieutenant General Bob Elder, U.S. Air Force retired, and I'm here to talk to you today about 21st century electronic warfare, and actually really a call to action for all members of the old Crows to advance electronic warfare for the 21st century. Here's what I'd like to talk about today. My purpose is to examine the role of electronic warfare in the 21st century military operations, and really just to highlight quickly some of the relationships with other modern warfighting capabilities. First thing I want to talk about briefly is this concept of an electronic warfare operational domain. Now we know that electronic warfare is conducted in every warfighting domain, but in fact, electronic warfare itself is conducted in a global domain of electronic systems that operate in an electromagnetic environment. That is, those electronic systems control the environment to create, control, exchange, and employ electromagnetic energy across the frequency spectrum, or as we typically refer to it, the EMS. But we do this to achieve physical, informational, and cognitive effects. So we have an operational domain, and that point, the key point, is that this domain consists of the electronics and the electromagnetic spectrum. When we look at electronic warfare, we have a long-standing definition that uh, has been used in the U.S. Uh, joint pub that says that it's any action involving the use of electromagnetic or directed energy to control the electromagnetic spectrum or attack the enemy. I think it's important to recognize control has always been part of the definition and this notion of using it to attack the enemy has always been part of the definition. Many of us in the electronic warfare business have actually lost sight of both of these as we've looked at the different activities involved in electronic warfare. The second point, which also comes out of U.S. Joint Doctrine, says that EW activities have been developed over time to exploit the opportunities and vulnerabilities that are inherent in the physics of electromagnetic energy. So as practitioners of electronic warfare, we are actually, or we should be, experts in the physics of electromagnetic energy and how to apply that to achieve effects. What types of effects are we talking about? Well, electronic warfare activities are inherently physical. And so we have electronic attack that operates against the electronics. That's why it's called electronic warfare. More recently, we've had this capability with electronic attack to actually have directed energy, which is actually taking the electromagnetic energy and applying it against an object that may not be another form of electronics to create an effect. We know that we have to protect against that kind of attack from an adversary, and so we have electronic protection. But a, a concept that we, we tend to have ignored is this concept of, of electromagnetic spectrum control. It's become increasingly important, particularly for those uh, who operate uh, where you have radio-controlled IEDs, those types of things. We recognize it's that much more important and this electronic support or electronic warfare support that allows us to do our electronic attack, do our electronic protection, and control the, the spectrum has become more important. So these are kind of the elements of those physical activities that constitute electronic warfare. So obviously we have physical effects that you see listed here that can go against the electronics, go against the spectrum, and with directed energy you can even go against other things that are uh, infrastructure type uh, capabilities. But the purpose of EW is to deny the opponent an advantage in the electromagnetic spectrum ops domain and to ensure friendly use of the elect electromagnetic ops domain uh, for ourselves. You see on the bottom of this slide that electro, uh, electronic attack includes actions uh, to prevent or reduce the enemy's effective use of the EMS. We understand that, but I also highlight to you, once again, out of joint doctrine in the U.S., that it also is the employment of weapons that use either electromagnetic or directed energy as their primary destructive mechanism. So this is a key element of electronic warfare, an important thing for us to remember. So when we look at these electronic warfare activities, and of course you can look at these in, in joint doctrine or read about it in any of our Association of Old Crows documents, see there's a whole list of activities that are conducted that involve either control of electromagnetic spectrum or using electromagnetic spectrum for purposes of attack or for protection or to support those other three. And that list is, is seen here. It's a long list. We have a lot of capabilities. Although the activities for electronic warfare are conducted in uh, physically, they can have cyber effects. 
And I think it's worthwhile to see here when we talk about cyber effects that we have electronic attack or EMS control going against the physical networks. But you have to recognize that the cyber networks can't exist without the physical networks. And certainly, uh, electromagnetic spectrum is a key part of those physical networks, as are the electronics. And so we can actually uh, create cyber effects with uh, electronic warfare activities. You see some of those listed here, just as examples. Interference, intrusion jamming can create denial of service. And of course, we can use directed energy to actually go against the electronics. So the point is, there is a relationship. And in fact, you must have this physical network operating to have the cyber network and electronic warfare, how we protect that network as well as in terms of how we deal with our adversary, how we attack the network is uh, very important in terms of what we think about electronic warfare in the 21st century. We can also have cognitive effects. We know that uh, we've had some discussions about the relationship of electronic warfare and information ops for a long time. I'd like to focus here on the influence operations, which is where we're talking about the employment of capabilities to alter behaviors. And so when we do this, we're trying to affect perceptions. We're trying to affect uh, knowledge. We want to protect our own knowledge. We think about that as uh, operational security, psychological operations, or military deception. You see a list there of EW capabilities that can support all of those different influence type operations. So electronic warfare is a means to conduct information operations, but it is not in and of itself information operations because it cr can create physical effects and cyber effects as well. We know that EW is important for net enabled operations. We sometimes have referred to this as command and control warfare or C2 warfare. That's because it's the electromagnetic spectrum that ties together the sensor to the shooter. As you see here, the sense, orient, decide, act, or the famous John Boyd OODA loop. If you lose your EMS, you lose situational awareness, you lose your ability to link operational centers, and you lose your ability at the tactical level to integrate those capabilities that allow you to do those net-enabled or net-centric operations. And from a command and control warfare standpoint, you can use electronic warfare to disrupt sensors, to manipulate the data, or degrade the systems uh, completely, or completely degrade or eliminate the connectivity. So our ability to protect against that is important, and that's an important part of what we do in the electronic warfare business, uh, but also that's a capability that we have in terms of how we might deal with an adversary. I have a list of fundamental EW principles. My intent here is, is not to read these principles to you, but to invite you to read it. It's in the uh, paper that the Association of Old Crows has published on, on uh, 21st century electronic warfare. Just want to highlight that, that we look at the electromagnetic spectrum as maneuver space, that we look at electronic warfare to create effects in the physical, informational, and cognitive domains and that we do that by using electronic systems to control electromagnetic spectrum. We are advocating that we not only worry about electronic attack and electronic protect, but nowadays we must think about the electromagnetic spectrum control and we need to add that to our list of elements along with uh, uh, electronic warfare support. We want to remind ourselves that electronic warfare provides freedom of action in all domains and it's critical to the uh, ability to do cyberspace operations because the physical networks on which the cyber networks ride are protected by electronic warfare or can be attacked through electronic warfare. The difference between cyber warfare and electro, uh, electronic warfare is the environments they operate in. Cyber space, by definition, is a global domain in the information environment. Electro, uh, electronic warfare is conducted in the electromagnetic environment, and those two environments are what really differentiate them. They both use electro, uh, electronic systems, and they both use electromagnetic spectrum, uh, but they operate in, in somewhat uh, different environments. And that last point, electronic warfare can be used just like network warfare can to support information operations. So I've given a list of uh, gaps and shortfalls for you to consider. We need to make sure that people understand that electronic warfare is critical to national security. We need to address some doctrinal shortfalls, specifically in terms of electromagnetic spectrum control and attack. We need to look at our ability 
to, to have a workforce to do these things in the future because we really have significantly reduced our production of electronic warfare specialists both in the military and in industry. We need to do leadership development to make sure that we have people in key positions that understand electronic warfare. And it would be helpful for us to have electronic warfare system standards that allow us to bring these different capabilities together across domains and across different uh, countries. So this list of opportunities here is specifically a call to action. And these opportunities are explained in more detail in the Association of Old Crow paper. And I hope that uh, you'll take time uh, to read that. Th these opportunities address the gaps in that previous slide. So in summary, the Association of Old Crow we exist to ensure that warfighters in all domains are properly prepared for operations in a contested electromagnetic spectrum environment, and that is what electronic warfare in the 21st century is all about. Thank you.